Whether at home or work, life is about relationships. Welcome to Small Change, Big Dividends with your host, Branch Isole. Small Change, Big Dividends shares steps, tools, and tips for personal career and spiritual growth. So please welcome the host of Small Change, Big Dividends, Branch Isole. Does this sound familiar? Your partner, spouse, or significant other says or does something harmful or inappropriate. This is followed, eventually, by a weak or insincere, I'm sorry. Followed by a non-committal plea of, let's move on. Sound familiar? Or worse, too familiar? Coming to you from deep in the forest, near the banks of the Wachita River, this is Small Changes, Big Dividends, on the Bold Brave TV and Talk Global Network. I'm your host, Branch Isole, and you are my featured guest. Small Changes, Big Dividends is a show where your questions are part of the program. So if you have a question, email it to branchisole.com and use any of the contact links. And thanks for joining me today for our topic, Seven Steps of Relationship Repair. On Small Changes, Big Dividends, we talk about personal, career, and spiritual Christianity essentials for growth-filled living. Each week, I share Mana'o with listeners from around the world. Today, I'm going to give you some small changes that can pay big dividends in your relationships and in your life. Because life is about relationships, but it's healthy relationships that encourage and embrace growth. This week, we're learning seven steps for relationship repair. Steps you can use with a partner, a spouse, significant other, even a teenager or coworker to start repairing a damaged relationship. If you and the other person have had or are now experiencing a strained relationship without resolution, be assured the issue will come up again. You know, we all come into relationships with a variety of experiences. Some we identify as growth, others we label baggage. From childhood up to this very moment, we each have baggage. Briefcases, overnight bags, suitcases. Some even have steamer trunks filled with past relationship experiences we identify as emotional baggage. Negative interactions, pain, drama, trauma that we hold on to tightly, sometimes for reasons even we don't understand. A common cycle in many troubled relationships often goes something like this. There's a harmful act or action, followed by I'm sorry, followed by a stammering, stumbling, mumbled excuse, or an effort to blame someone or someone else, followed by another week I'm sorry, and finally a plea of can't we just move on? Are you familiar with this scenario? Are you too familiar with this scenario? The problem here is the issue is never really addressed or worked on, and it's certainly not resolved. So the question is why? The answer is because neither person knows what the next step is after can't we just move on? And so the cycle repeats. There's no plan. There's no repair. There's no taking responsibility. People don't split up because they fall out of love. They leave because they become indifferent. Every negative relationship cycle 
has us attempting to move forward in continual states of uncomfortableness, or even worse, comfortable misery. In too many relationships, there's often little or no real desire to change. Again, the question is why? The simple reason is neither person knows what that next step is after can't we just move on. But in the world of relationship reality, what does moving on actually look like? What does moving on really mean? Waiting for the other shoe to drop? Again. Starting the cycle over? Again. Today I have a gift for you. I'm going to give you a plan. A seven-step plan that will work if you truly want to rebuild or repair a damaged relationship. After today's episode of Small Changes, Big Dividends, there won't be any question as to what the next step should be. You'll know. You and your partner, team, co-worker can start to break the cycle of negative, harmful behavior with these seven steps starting today. If you've ever wanted to repair a damaged relationship, here's your opportunity. Even better, you and the other person in this situation can begin immediately after hearing today's show. So there's no reason to delay. There's no additional needed help. And you don't need someone's approval. You can begin addressing whatever the issue may be and start on the path to reconciliation with these seven steps. You know, too many couples, too many partners find it easier to make excuses or to blame someone or something else instead of finding a solution that works. If you want to change your life and your relationships, here's your chance. When a relationship is struggling, Why do we respond in the ways that we do? Why? For most of us, it's the response we knew because it's the response we saw as children. Our relationship examples were the adults in our lives. And as we grew, we learned from their words, we learned from their actions, and we learned from their examples. From childhood to teenager to adult, we learn what behavior under stress looks like by what we saw in our home. Now I'm an adult. How do I act? How do I react? Well, what did I witness as a child? What did I see play out at home as a teenager? Now, this is not to condemn anyone's parents. It's a simple fact. We and our parents learned our core relationship values and behaviors through the words and actions of those we and they grew up watching and listening to. Those we looked up to, those we watched as our examples, of how to respond under stress. It's their actions we now imitate. The fact is most disagreeing or fighting families never have a plan. They never have steps to use after, can't we just move on? And so the cycle continues. Time after time, family after family, Generation after generation, relationship after relationship. And when we seek help from our friends or concerned family members, what's the common response we're told? Get professional help, right? See a therapist, see a counselor. And what's the first rationalization we mumble when we're in counseling? We're not how to communicate. 
What? We don't know how to communicate. Have you heard this? Have you said this? Here's a fact. Those who want to repair, reconcile, and rebuild their relationship start at the beginning. Mental health and relationship studies show the top three issues in troubled relationships revolve around money, children, or sex. The first element in a troubled relationship that must be addressed is identification of the harm, meaning what act or action caused the pain and why. And we're going to take our first commercial break, but when we come back, we're going to talk about the levels of pain in every troubled relationship event. You're listening to Small Changes, Big Dividends on the Bold Brave TV and Talk Global Network. I'm your host, Branch Soleil. We'll be right back. What if there were a super tiny device that could diagnose the brain and is smaller than a single human hair? What if you could see inside the brain to help an epilepsy patient during surgery or to help the fight against Parkinson's disease? Dr. Patricia Broderick is proud to announce the Broderick Probe, a biomedical and electronic breakthrough. Imagine a probe to help with the understanding and potential cure of brain-related diseases. To learn more, listen live to the Easy Sense Radio Show with host Dr. Broderick, Wednesdays, 7 p.m. Eastern on the Bold Brave Media Network and TuneIn Radio. And to help support the Broderick Foundation, please go to Easy sense.com and learn how with your help we can fight these horrific brain disorders that's easysense.com to learn more and help support the broderick foundation author radio show host and coach john m hawkins reveals strategies to help gain perspective build confidence find clarity achieve goals john m hawkins new book Coached to Greatness, unlock your full potential with limitless growth. Published by iUniverse, Hawkins reveals strategies to help readers accomplish more. He believes the book can coach them to greatness. Hawkins says that the best athletes get to the top of their sport with the help of coaches, mentors, and others. He shares guidance that helps readers reflect on what motivates them rediscover and assess their core values philosophies and competencies find settings that allow them to be the most productive and track their progress towards accomplishing goals listen to john hawkins my strategy saturdays 1 p.m eastern on the bbm global network and tune in radio welcome back you're listening to small changes big dividends on the Bull Brave TV and Talk Global Network. I'm your host, Branch Isole. This week, we're talking about seven steps of relationship repair. But before we get to the seven steps, let's look behind the veil. To repair a damaged relationship, it's first necessary to recognize and understand that there are three levels of pain in every troubled event. Now notice, I said event, not relationship. Every harmful event has these three pain levels that must be acknowledged and addressed. The first is the manifested act or action when one person does something harmful to the other. Whatever that act or action may be, it's destructive to the relationship. So the first level of pain is associated with the act. How or why did you do that? The second level is the feeling of betrayal. This is where deeper hurt resonates. At this level, indignation sets in and deep emotional pain exists. Level two betrayal is where the act cuts like a knife. And finally, level three is broken trust. Now, no matter the issue, 
the problem, or the act, these three pain levels exist. Action, betrayal, broken trust. All three are real. Therefore, all three must be part of the repair process for our seven steps to succeed. But wait, there's more. Two additional agreements must be present. First, both people must be willing to discuss the issue openly and honestly. And second, both must be willing to go through all seven steps. Why? Because the seven steps don't solve the problem. The seven steps guide us on a path of repair. And like other behavioral change programs, they work if they're embraced and engaged. So let's talk about that first point, open and honest discussion. If you're in a committed relationship and you've verbalized love and care for another person, then you've expressed commitment to share with that person information and or elements about yourself you've generally kept hidden from the world. You've pledged to share with that person knowledge about you that no one or few others may know. This is the person in your life you should and can be most open with, right? Here's a common problem in troubled relationships. We withhold information about ourselves that the other person should know. And believe it or not, the most common reason given for withholding this pertinent information is, I didn't want to hurt their feelings. What? We claim to love them, but can't be honest because we didn't want to hurt their feelings? Are you kidding me? Let's skip this craziness for right now. This is the person we should and must be most open and honest with if we truly expect to repair the damage our relationship is experiencing. Both people must agree to be honest going forward, at least until this specific issue is resolved. If you and the other person will commit to this initial honesty, your relationship will have a chance to survive and possibly grow. So the question becomes, do you value your relationship and its survival potential enough to be honest? If you can't, if you won't, or if you refuse to be honest about the issue, your struggle will most likely continue. It will not go away. And even if the relationship should ultimately fail, by taking this step of open and honest communication, growth for you and your individual's future will have taken a giant step forward. So here's today's second point. Both people must commit to go through all seven steps. As with every growth process, it only succeeds if it's completed. But if those two weren't enough, here's the caveat. The seven steps do not replace professional help. Many couples dealing with issues require or need professional assistance. That's just the truth. But what if you don't have the time, the money, the opportunity, or the inclination right now for professional intervention? Then these seven steps will get you started by providing a plan to examine and work through the problem or issue at hand so that if and when you're ready for professional guidance or intervention, these steps will have prepared you. They'll help bring to the table your relationship disruption. And when you go to the professional, the foundations will be in place. The issue will have been pre-established and the seven steps will have helped shine a light 
on the elements of the problem. This will also help your therapist or counselor get a start quicker. So now you're saying, Branch, give me the steps already. Okay, get a pen and paper ready, because here's the seven steps of relationship repair. First, recognition that harm has occurred. Both people must recognize that one person has been harmed by the other. Step number two, the offender must take responsibility for what they've said or done. Step three, the offender must have remorse. Step four, the offender must feel regret. Step five, the offender must be willing to make redress. Step six, the offender must commit to not repeating this act in the future. And step seven is repentance. Now, many people think about repentance in terms of religious uh, connection, but repentance is nothing more than changed future behavior. There you have it. Seven steps you can use to start repairing a damaged relationship today. But here's the kicker. Each step may be shaded or influenced by what the offender considers inappropriate behavior. And this can be colored by their childhood experiences and upbringing. So this is where red flag awareness becomes important. But we'll get into more of that next week. And we're going to pause quickly for our second commercial break. But when we return, we're going to look closer at each of the seven steps. You're listening to Small Changes, Big Dividends on the Bold, Brave TV and Talk Global Network. I'm your host, Branch Isole, and we'll be right back. Did you know that your beliefs create your entire reality? But it's the subconscious beliefs that do most of the creating. Belief Shifter and Life Coach Shiraz can help you identify those limiting beliefs and eliminate them, often in a single session. Like it was almost instant, like I had relief right away. Creating better health, relationships, careers, and finances. Let Shiraz help you step out of safety and into awareness. Definitely something's happening. Uh, it's like a, a flow inside. You know, it feels good. Whether in person or online, Shiraz provides personal coaching, belief shifting. Visit Shiraz at energeticmagic.com or call 416-529-7429. Energetic Magic on the BBM Global Network, Tuesdays at 7 p.m. Eastern. Find your greater happiness. Be well. Be aware. Be magical. Are you struggling to care for elderly parents or a spouse? Do you wonder if being a caregiver is making you sick? Are you worried about taking time off work to care for elderly parents and balance work, life, and caregiving? Has caregiving become exhausting and emotionally draining? Are you an aging adult who wants to remain independent, but you're not sure how? I'm Pamela D. Wilson. Join me for the Caring Generation radio show for caregivers and aging adults, Wednesday evenings, 6 Pacific, 7 Mountain, 8 Central, and 9 Eastern, where I answer these questions and share tips for managing stress, family relationships, health, well-being, and more. Podcasts and transcripts of The Caring Generation are on my website, PamelaDWilson.com, plus my caregiving library, online caregiver support programs, and programs for corporations interested in supporting working caregivers. Help, hope, and support for caregivers is here on The Caring Generation and PamelaDWilson.com. Welcome back. You're listening to Small Changes, Big Dividends on the Bold Brave TV and Talk Global Network. I'm your host, Branchy Soleil. So let's look closer at each of our seven steps. 
Step number one, recognizing that harm has occurred. Whether it's verbal, physical, or emotional, it can be tough and it's hard on every relationship in trouble. The perpetrator may not identify his or her act or action as harmful. That's why it's imperative that both people agree that harm was committed. Step number two, taking responsibility. The offender must be willing to take personal responsibility for what was said or done. Like recognition step before it, taking responsibility must be accepted by the offender. Step number three, remorse. The offender must have a sense that harm has been caused. They must feel empathy and feel sorry that they put you through that. The next step, regret. This is a feeling of emotional shame. Shame that I, as the offender, could have done that to you. Step number six, redress. There has to be some form of correction going forward, and it must be agreed to. Step number six, re repetition. It can never again be repeated in the future. And step seven, changed future behavior. This act or what was said or done cannot happen again. Now we have the seven steps, what more do we need to know about them? Well, all seven steps must be agreed to and worked to through together by both parties. Will the process take time? Yes. Issues take time. Big issues take more time. In the reconciliation process, we're looking for agreement correction, atonement, forgiveness, and trustable future action. Let me repeat those again for those who are writing this down. Agreement, correction, atonement, forgiveness, and trustable future actions. Our seven-step process may cause what at first appears to be more pain because it's bringing into the light that which has been hidden in the shadows. The deeper the wound, the more cleansing that must occur for healthy healing to take place. So be patient. Remember, you're basically starting over with a problem area. Try not to tie the old into the new have realistic new expectations. Starting over is exactly that, starting over, beginning refreshed. Wiping clean the slate, but the slate will never be cleared if recriminations lurk in the shadows. Be honest, be an adult, be open and be truthful. There's nothing worse than reconciliation when one person still secretly wonders, doubts, or distrusts. Until trust is recovered, there will always be doubts. And where doubts linger, trust has a toehold. Recovering trust is a time burner, not minutes, not hours not days, but weeks or months, sometimes many months or longer. Our second small change this week is to keep written notes. Now, you may already be keeping a diary, a journal, a notebook, or a workbook. Great. The writing process can be therapeutic. Why? Why is the writing process so important? Because keeping written notes and records of emotions, actions, feelings, or problems can be helpful. 
If you're not writing things down, start. Today is the time to begin. Notes are valuable as you move forward through the seven steps. Written notes help record progress. They give us a chronology of events, what's been said, what's been done, what's been promised or agreed to, and what hasn't happened as agreed. Notes become important for you, for your counselor, for your therapist, and perhaps for your attorney. Plus, it's difficult to remember what was said, what was done, and what was promised, and when, from previous conversations, days, weeks, or months ago. Written recollections become invaluable. How important is tracking your progress in writing? Well, let me tell you a true story. The Yale graduating class of 1973 was asked how many of them kept written notes, written goals, written future events that they wished to accomplish. 20 years later, they went back and surveyed those same graduates. And do you know the the ones who wrote things down, who made lists of their ambitions and their dreams and their goals, the top 3% were worth more than the other 97% combined. This is the power of the writing process. Our seven steps are a process for growth, as well as a growth process. So there you have it. Small changes that will pay big dividends and improve your relationships and your life. Now, each week, I try to answer a question from our listeners. And this week's question comes from Rachel in California, who asks, why do bad things happen to good people? This question is also t sometimes stated as, if God is a loving God, why does he punish people? Well, let's start with the first iteration. Why do bad things happen to good people? We often hear people lament about someone who has suffered or died, recalling they were too good to be taken or they were too good to have suffered. Granted, many may be taken sooner than others, and some in horrific ways or circumstances. Except for our personal loss or the tragic loss of children, how do we know who was good? What determines goodness? Who determines goodness? And what exactly is goodness? You know, people around the world die every day. How many do we know? How many did we know well enough to know what went on behind their closed doors? But you get my point. Human nature is about self. Our actions are most often about what's in it for me. Decisions and choices for most of us most of the time are focused on self. How can I get the things of this world that I desire in spite of the damage I may cause or the people I may hurt? This is a fairly common attitude. This way, the, this world's ways teach and encourage us to embrace what it offers. And in many cases, to do whatever we can, to do whatever we might, or to do whatever we think we need to, or can get away with, to succeed in acquiring possessions. And what does this world encourage? The exact opposite of goodness, the exact opposite of respectful, and the exact opposite of appropriate or personal responsibility. 
So the next time you hear the comment, they were too good to have endured that hardship or to have died. Remember, we actually know the smallest measure of their life, their choices, and their motivations behind their behaviors. As to the castigation of God's involvement in our punishment, to start with, God is not a punisher. But convincing people that God is vengeful or is a revenge-seeking punisher are great talking points for people, groups, or religions to spew in order to weaponize God. But why? Why would they want us to believe God is a punisher? Throughout history, far too many people in positions of religious, political, or economic power have promulgated this thought about who God is and why he wants to punish it. And why would they want to promote this idea so strenuously? Well, it's about greed power and control over other people's beliefs and other people's actions. What better way to control people's choices and behaviors than to suppress their core understanding about God by concealing the truth with fabrications, misinformation, and disinformation, and then back their words up with God loves to punish. If we can be convinced God is mean and nasty and always desiring to punish us, we certainly don't want to run into his arms and we certainly do want to turn away. Some in religions or political organizations want us to think that we as evildoers and lawbreakers and unbelievers deserve to be punished. I want to take our final commercial break. And when we come back, we're going to look at the motivations behind these people. You're listening to Small Changes, Big Dividends on the Bold Brave TV and Talk Global Network. I'm your host, Branch Soleil. We'll be right back. Author, radio show host, and coach John M. Hawkins reveals strategies to help gain perspective, build confidence, find clarity, achieve goals. John M. Hawkins' new book, Coached to Greatness, unlock your full potential with limitless growth. Published by iUniverse. Hawkins reveals strategies to help readers accomplish more. He believes the book can coach them to greatness. Hawkins says that the best athletes get to the top of their sport with the help of coaches, mentors, and others. He shares guidance that helps readers reflect on what motivates them, rediscover and assess their core values, philosophies, and competencies, find settings that allow them to be the most productive, and track their progress towards accomplishing goals. Listen to John Hawkins' My Strategy, Saturdays, 1 p.m. Eastern, on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. What if there were a super tiny device that could diagnose the brain and is smaller than a single human hair? What if you could see inside the brain to help an epilepsy patient during surgery or to help the fight against Parkinson's disease? Dr. Patricia Broderick is proud to announce the Broderick Probe, a biomedical and electronic breakthrough. Imagine a probe to help with the understanding and potential cure of brain-related diseases. To learn more, listen live to the Easy Sense Radio Show with host Dr. Broderick, Wednesdays, 7 p.m. Eastern, on the Bold Brave Media Network and TuneIn Radio. And to help support the Broderick Foundation, please go to Easy sense.com and learn how with your help we can fight these horrific brain disorders that's easysense.com to learn more and help support the broderick foundation
Welcome back. You're listening to Small Changes, Big Dividends on the Bull Brave TV and Talk Global Network. I'm your host, Branch Isole, and we're answering the question of, if God is love, then why does he punish us? You know, some in religious and political organizations want us to think, again, that we as evildoers, lawbreakers, and unbelievers deserve to be punished. And therefore, we need an advocate or a mediator to represent us and tell our story for us in hopes that our punishment won't be too harsh. And where can we find this mediator? At church, at synagogue, at mosque, or through some other group leader? The Pharisaic Christian, the Hasidic rabbi, the jihadist imam, or the authoritarian fascist are all prepared to condemn those who choose truth. Instead of genuflecting over the self-promoted exaltation of those clinging greedily to power and control over other people's choices and behaviors. The fact is God allows each of us free will to choose which events, which people and which circumstances, as well as relationships, and yes, even a relationship with God, we will choose to engage in, believe in, or cultivate. The truth is, most often our negative outcomes in life are a direct consequence of our own making through our choices and decisions. If we are punished or suffer, it's most often by our own inappropriate choices. Turning our backs on God's protective blessings to instead embrace the ways of the world inevitably produce experiences aligned with what the world has for us. Denial, deceit, deception, and doubt. You know, we're conditioned from childhood to believe what the world has told us, sold us, or convinced us about what we should or shouldn't do, what we can or cannot believe, what we can live and can't live without, and what we deserve or don't deserve to have. No matter the harm it may cause to us or those we claim to care and love for. I'd like to thank Rachel for her question today. If you have a question, email it to branchesole.com. Use any of the contact links. Join me next week when our conversation will be 12 life lessons we all experience. If you've ever wondered why the same challenges seem to re reoccur over and over at home and work, join me next week to find out why. Thanks for joining me today on Small Changes, Big Dividends, where we discuss personal, career, and spiritual Christianity essentials for growth-filled living. If you know someone who could benefit from today's episode, please share it with them. If today's show has been helpful for you, please give us a rating and review. And to know more about my work, I invite you to visit my website, branchesole.com, or my YouTube channel, Branch Isole. Today's show has been sponsored by Crystal Creek Farm. If you have a business, a product or service you'd like to share with the world on Small Changes Big Dividends, send your inquiry to the website. You've been listening to Small Changes Big Dividends on the Bold Brave TV and Talk Global Network. I'm your host, Branch Isole, 
Until next week, all the best. This has been Small Change Big Dividends. When you're ready for healthier, more successful relationships at home or work, Small Change Big Dividends is your show. Wednesdays, 4 p.m. Eastern on the Bold Brave TV Network.